couple of weeks ago, I released a short video explaining how you can mic one thing with two mics. I had a 57 straight into the cone of a guitar amplifier and one at an angle. One bright and one dark, you might say, and together they would make a bigger sound. Then I posted that video on a group on Facebook. And there the discussion led to what you should do and what you shouldn't do and what's right and what's wrong when miking things. And I said just no, 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 no. There are no rules and I will explain and prove that in this video. Well, actually, there are some rules, and they all have to do with the force of nature, the laws of nature. You can't change that. That's a fact. And they all have to do with phase shifting and things like that when you're using two mics or more. But let's forget about them in this video. Maybe I will do another video about those rules. But for this video, let's concentrate on what mics to choose where and when you're recording instruments, because then there are no rules. Most rules that you hear of I see them as guidelines, guidelines to help you get a faster result and maybe sometimes a better result if you learn them. But there are actually no rules, there are tastes, but not rules. For example, this discussion was that you couldn't use dynamic microphones at a distance because they have a thicker membrane, so they wouldn't pick up the high frequencies as much as a condenser microphone would do. But that I think you can use to your, your advantage if you know what you're doing. In my shorts video, I didn't even mic my guitar amplifier from a distance. I mic'd it close. I had 157 straight into the cone and one at an angle, with the membrane so close together that it wouldn't cause a face issue. If you don't know about my shorts videos, just check out them on my, my YouTube channel. And when you're at it, you can subscribe. It is a fact that a dynamic microphone have a thicker membrane than a condenser microphone and therefore it picks up less high frequencies because high frequencies have less energy than low frequencies. It's not so hard to understand actually. But I think that you can use that to your, your advantage. Say that you're miking, you have room mics on your drum kit and the room is pretty harsh. If you put dynamic microphones as your room mic, then it would pick up less of the harsh high frequencies than a condenser microphone would do. Different microphones have different purposes, of course. They are made for different things. Dynamic microphones, for example, are often made for closed miking. Condenser, either close or distant miking. And then we have ribbon microphones, like this one. This happens to be a stereo ribbon microphone. And they are always, nearly always, a figure eight, so it picks up both from the back and the front, and it has a very thin membrane, which makes the transient response more like a condenser microphone, but often also a rolled off top end, which makes it sound more like a dynamic microphone in that aspect. And if you know this, you can use the microphones, both benefits and faults, to your advantage. What microphone to choose for each purpose is of course different. And maybe someone says that you need to use that kind of microphone for that source. But I will try to bend the rules a bit. You probably heard that you should use a condenser microphone to record an acoustic guitar. But I will use a dynamic mic now. So this is an acoustic guitar mic with an SM57. And of course you shouldn't use a microphone made for bass drum to sing in, right? Well, let's try it. I realize as the days go by Things get easier if we try To embrace the changes that we know will last But still be nostalgic about the past And together, the guitar mic with an SM57 and a vocal mic with an Audix D6 bass drum mic sounds like this. 
realize as the days go by things get easier if we try to embrace the change. This is not the best recording I've ever done. I would probably have used other microphones for this purpose, but I'm trying to prove a point that you can choose other microphones if you like the sound of it, if you like the placement and how it reacts to the instrument and the vocal, you can record with whatever you want. And it doesn't matter what anyone else says. I think Picasso once said that you should learn the rules like a pro so you can break them as an artist. And I agree a bit with that. Try to learn the rules but see them as guidelines, not as rules. Rules in Swedish is regler, regler. Till next time, Roger that. We try to embrace the changes that we know will last, but still be nostalgic 